Hello and welcome back uh, to this week's IG Live. Thank you guys for being flexible. We are making it work so we get our IG Live with author Dee Dee Cumming. She's the founder and CEO of Makeaway Media and she's also the mother of the bride. Her her daughter Kayla just got married this past weekend. If you've been following her on Instagram, you've seen some of those beautiful pictures and videos from the wedding. So we are gonna get the inside scoop on all about the that gorgeous wedding. And we're also gonna be talking more generally about mother-daughter relationships and how those evolve over time. Hello, those of you who have read her five book series, a children's books, Kayla, A Modern Day Princess, know that a lot of it is about relationships between mothers and daughters and how those evolve over time. And so we're gonna be talking more about that. And I apologize if you hear any background noise uh, because we had to kind of shift the time. I have my kids in the background who hopefully can um, manage themselves a little better. So we are gonna be talking with Didi about the wedding and also more generally about the mother-daughter relationships as seen in the Kayla books. And many of you know that, um, hello. Sorry, I just saw Didi just got on here. We are gonna be talking about um, especially how the mother-daughter relationship is portrayed in the Kayla books. And there's specifically a conversation about marriage in there. Um, for those of you who have read that, it's a really wonderful portrayal of a mother-daughter relationship across the five books as Kayla is getting older. And of course, those were inspired by the real life relationship between Dee Dee and her daughter, which of course has evolved because now Kayla is a, is all grown up and she is living her dream of being on Broadway and also um, just got married this past weekend. So we are gonna hear all about that. Hold on while I get her on here for you. We do this every Thursday, usually at two o'clock Eastern, uh, excuse me, one o'clock Eastern. We're doing it today at two o'clock. And sometimes that happens, we have to accommodate our schedules and the schedules of our guests. So be sure to watch out for announcements um, about that. But we try to keep it short to about 20 minutes because we know you guys are busy. And just try to bring a little dose of inspiration to your week and also some practical tools that you can use for yourself and your families in order to um, to live your best lives and uh, to thrive in this wonderful world we're living in. And that's not to say that we don't recognize their challenges. Of course, there's a lot happening in our world today and we're very realistic about that, but wonderful library of interviews that you can go back and look at. We've talked a lot about, for example, journaling or meditation, manifesting your dreams. Hello. Hi. Hi. So good to talk with you. You too. I apologize for being late, you know, forever, for like two years. Right. Um, we go live at three o'clock. Yes. So uh, old habits are hard for me to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just sure. We we were doing this at three today, so I can't apologize enough for getting my times mixed up. Well, we are happy that that we were able to make it work. Yeah, yeah, we make a way so we could we could have this conversation because I know I was really looking forward to this, and I know other people <laughs> were as well. So, first of all, congratulations! Thank you, it's Mother been, of the Bride. It's been such an exciting week. Yeah, I week, can imagine a week of partying. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of emotions happening too. Oh man, I'm really, I'm surprised um, by how tired I am almost still a week later. So I do think that was a lot of emotion um, that was zapping my energy um, because I'm shocked that I'm, I'm this tired. By the time we got to the week out before the wedding, there really wasn't a whole lot to do. So I actually felt pretty good. I went to a band books trivia night uh, last Wednesday and some of the people there were like, why are you here? Don't you have a wedding <laughs> plan? But by that time, um, uh, it, it seemed like everything was done. So I'm surprised that I'm this tired, but it was an absolutely wonderful week and I can't wait to show everyone. I want to show everybody who's on um, one of the pictures that we got back yeah. from the wedding. So, that's just one of the pictures we got back already from the professional photographer who was there. And um, we're really excited because um, some of these pictures are going to be in a couple of different um, 
publications, which I'll make sure to share on social media when they come out. But it's just exciting to see so many people be so happy for true, genuine yeah. love. Um, but the reason I wanted to come on and talk about it is because either life is imitating art or art is imitating life. But in the Kayla book series that, that um, we published in the last couple of years, um, there is some talk about Kayla getting married, which is coincidental. Um, I think it's maybe not so much as a coincidence as it's just a part of a mom's story. And so this is a book series I wrote with my daughter as the inspiration. Of course, it's, it's not her real life story, um, but she's definitely the inspiration for these stories. And her, her real life nickname is A Little Magic. We really do call Kayla A Little Magic. But this is the last book in the series. And in the last book of the series, there are just some beautiful images that Charlene Mosley, uh, one of the illustrators I work with, um, has written about this dialogue, or one of the illustrators I work with has illustrated about this dialogue I've written between a mom and daughter and their discussion about Kayla getting married. So in the book, um, Kayla graduates from college and she comes home and tells her mom she has big news to share and of course her mom automatically thinks that she's getting married and really the big news is that she's going to Broadway so um it's just I don't know it's just very interesting um how uh life has imitated art or art has imitated, imitated life one or the other I'm not sure which <laughs> well one of the things I love about it is I mean, when that, was, that book came out a few years ago that you were talking about this before she was even engaged. Right. But one of the things that's so cool about it is, is early on, the mom is such a big supporter and helps Kayla so much, but kind of towards the mm -hmm. end, that conversation is so interesting because especially as a working mom, this is somebody who's really mm -hmm. gone out for her dreams, like really a modern mother, right? Right. But at the same time, her first thought when her daughter says she has big news is, oh, she's getting married. Yes. Like in a way, like when we think about it, which is true, like a lot of times when we think about our kids, we fall back on these kind of like traditional ideas yeah. of what we want for them. We go after, you know, of course we want to pursue our dreams, but we get really nervous when it comes to them doing the same thing. We want to look out for them. We want to protect them. And that's what the mom's doing. And Kayla has to say, no, mom, that's not, that's not how I'm going to do things. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go follow my dreams just like you did, yeah. which makes the mom really nervous. But I, I love that because it's, you know, I think it's a really realistic portrayal of that relationship. I do too. You know, it's a tough conversation because, um, you know, in this day and age, there's a lot of talk about how marriage shouldn't be something that's necessarily like expected of people because um so many women um, this sounds weird to even say but it's true i mean many more women today have careers and come out of college or even out of high school and focus on their career um it's just not as common anymore for women to say i my number one goal in life is to get married right. um, and that really did used to be the goal that was expected for women to say. Um, so I love that the Kayla series, you know, doesn't make it seem like it's a bad, it's not a bad thing to get married or to fall in love, but um, there's nothing wrong with having a dream that is not centered around finding another person or centered around marriage. Mm -hmm. um, Cause there's always time for that. And I tell a lot of the therapy clients that I work with when you know, they're kind of like focused on finding someone like their life can't start until they find someone. Um, I talk a lot about how you have your whole life to find someone and fall in love. Um, let's find you first. Mm -hmm. And so I love that, you know, Kayla's mom was kind of making it seem or genuinely believed that she was um, looking out for Kayla's best interest and, you know, thought if Kayla was in a relationship that Kayla wouldn't have to worry about certain things. And these are all things that Kayla is capable of taking care of on her own. Um, but then when mom says, I just don't want you to worry, I like that Kayla kind of confronts her and flips it back on her and says, you mean you don't want to have to, I like that. Cause that, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think especially as a, 
as a parent, I read it differently than I probably would have read it if this had come if I had been reading this as a kid. Yeah. You know, kid, I would have thought all about you know following my dreams. But as a parent, I I really relate to the idea of of wanting your kids to follow their dreams, but at the same time, kind of worrying about it also and thinking, is this going to work out? Should I should I try and steer them towards something that's a little safer that I know is going to work out or try and, you know, you just try and protect them from life, but that's not really the best way to go about it. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to write right now uh, the next level of the Kayla story. Um, I'm trying to write... Uh, chapter books and middle grade books, um, which, you know, it's, it's difficult for me to do because I don't sit still a lot. So <laughs> it's harder, you know, to write more words for me because I really need to sit down. I can sit down and write all these words, but then, you know, going back and cleaning them up and editing them and making right. sure that the story flows and makes sense. You know, that, that's the difficult part. Um, oh, I just noticed I got my nails done too. I, I usually don't have my nails done. <laughs> that's like nice. <laughs> wedding I forgot all about that till I started like flashing them uh, anyway uh, that's that's like the the part of me that has trouble focusing but anyway mm -hmm. uh, but I I bring that up because I can't wait to tell more of this story and you know mothers and daughters have um, sometimes difficult relationships definitely interesting relationships but mothers and daughters have a relationship um, that no one else in the family has. Um, and I think that a lot of times there's a lot of tension between moms and daughters, and we really don't talk about this a lot uh, in, in general. Um, but I think there's a lot of tension between moms and daughters because I think moms put a lot of hopes and expectations on their daughters of all the things that they wish they would have done differently or implemented differently, timed things differently. Um, but I definitely know the things that me and my daughter have the most tension about are the things that I really want to impress upon her. I would like for her to do differently than what I did. Mm. Um, and you know, you just, you can only teach those things and then you have to let it go because their life really does belong to them. Right. So you can have these hopes um, for things that you learned that maybe they'll do differently, but you do really have to practice patience and um, practice mindfulness in a way that helps you realize that all of these little seeds of knowledge that you have dropped in your child from zero to let's just say like 18, that they really will take root in their young adulthood. Um, and so you have to trust that. That's what I mean by mindfulness. You have to trust that, and then you have to let it go. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'll drive a little crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, that must be really hard to do, though. It is. It's very easy for me to say. Mm -hmm. But um, mindfulness is a practice. It's something that you have to really, you know, a lot of people don't really understand what mindfulness is, and we can talk about that another day in more detail. But it doesn't mean that you have to... Um, sit in complete silence or sit quietly. It means that you just have to give yourself time to hear your thoughts. A lot of people think it's just sitting, you know, with your legs crossed and, you know, putting your hands like this and going, um, and that does work for some people because they can pay attention to that tone instead of paying attention to the silence, which sometimes can drive people a little crazy with the stuff that's bouncing around in their head but that stuff that's bouncing around in your head is the stuff that you need to hear mm -hmm. and the more you do that um and the more you take care of yourself the more you pour into yourself the easier it is to really truly believe that you have done enough mm -hmm. i thought that's yeah that's hard i mean it's especially as my kids are getting older, I think that because you have this idea uh, when they're born, you're going to do everything perfect and you're going to do all these things, you know, and you read all the books and yeah. follow all the blogs or whatever of all the things you're going to do. And then at a certain age, you realize, wow, that didn't happen. It didn't go exactly like I thought it would. But like you said, just this idea that you've done enough. Yes. And, and then you have to let them lead their lives. Yeah. You have to hold on to the fact that you have done enough. Mm -hmm. It will always be perfect. It won't look perfect. It might not feel perfect. It won't be perfect. 
Um, but what will be perfect is that you have poured the right amount of knowledge into them that they'll be able to use as they build their own life. You know, we, we really do look at kids as, as property, you know, they belong to us, they're ours. They do what we say, like Nick, my youngest, he's 14 now and it drives me crazy. Like he used to do whatever I would tell him to do. He would do whatever dance I told him to do. If I wanted to take a picture and I, one time we were on this trip and he was dressed up like a little pirate and I told him make the little pirate face like, you know, and he did that. Well, he did that at six, but at 14, he won't do that. And <laughs> easy because I'm like oh please just make this face or just do this dance or show so and so that you can do blah 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 and he's like no I'm not doing that you know it's his life and mm -hmm. he makes his own choices now not that he's ready at 14 to you know make adult choices I'm not saying right. that but the older they get you know the less they're going to do those things but when he has kids He'll do the same thing with his kids. He might dress them as a pirate and say, make the pirate face and they'll do it. You know, there'll, there'll be things that he will remember from his childhood that I gave him that are fun and smart and light. And those will be the things that they'll hold on to when they're an adult. So you just have to know um, that you're not going to do everything like you said perfectly, you know, when they're born and you want things to go perfectly. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be perfect enough. Hmm. <laughs> well, before we go, because it's it's we're coming up on time, but I would love to know: Are there any fun like stories or thoughts that you had from the wedding itself, or from all the build up to the wedding? Because, like you said, I know it's like a whole weekend of partying. Yeah. And any or just you know reflections now and um, now that it's been about a week since then. I have so many, and I could go on it. A dozen different directions with this question because just a lot happened and it was all good but a lot happened but I learned so much that like I blog on my own personal site just about life and things I learned but I even thought about blogging about this wedding process because even that was enlightening um, but the best story I have to share is um, just the beauty of Kayla and Colin, my new son-in-law, which I can't believe I have a son-in-law, um, the, the beauty of Kayla and Colin's love story um, and that people really will find each other when they're healthy and they're healed and the time is right. You don't have to worry about that. You just keep working on you and you will attract the person that you are supposed to have in your life, but they just have this beautiful love story and um, please watch my own page, Author Dee Dee Cumming, because I have been sharing a lot of stuff from the wedding on my page that's fun and um, it's cool to see and to watch um, for anyone. So if you like feeling um, uh, happy and light and you like seeing love, please follow along because uh, I'm sharing a lot of stuff there. And also, um, I'm going to soon be sharing a video of them dancing. Um, they did um, a surprise routine, which nobody knew about because um, Colin is a musician and he is a Broadway actor also, but he is also an Irish dancer. And so there was just this beautiful dance that they did kind of welcoming Kayla um, into this culture. And I just thought it was gorgeous. I thought what a perfect way to show um, the the melding of two lives two cultures two completely different backgrounds but yet so much the same you know uh kayla's not an irish dancer so there's two different backgrounds but they're both performers and they're both surrounded by people who love to perform and love the arts so it was weird because it was this dichotomy of um um something so different but then it showed how they're really not different at all I, that has to be one of my favorite things um, and definitely one of my favorite scenes from the wedding. Um, but you'll see a lot of other stories that I love too if you just keep following along on social media while I share these beautiful images and sentiments from the wedding. It was, it was, it was perfect. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I encourage everybody to go and to, to, to follow along on your page because I've been watching and it's just, the, like you said, I mean, the photos and, mm -hmm. and the video, everything is so beautiful. And what really comes through is just so much love. Yeah. Like you said, obviously their love story, but I was also struck by all the love in your family. Yeah. 
And like, I know you posted, uh, you had one post that was just about the love between the siblings and the relationship yeah. that they've developed, which I would think as a parent is probably one of the most gratifying yes. things to see how they love and support each other. And uh, one of my favorites too is, I think it was, was it your dad's sister? Oh yeah. So Reverend Colin. I love that she's doing this right before the wedding yeah. as if she's find something out that's yeah. gonna call off the wedding at this point but the, that's just how families are like we yeah. are we're always looking out for each other and sometimes this can be like in yeah. kind of funny silly ways but yeah my, it's just my, so much love. my dad's sister aunt lori mm -hmm. she was grilling colin like the day before the wedding maybe, <laughs> maybe the days before the wedding and i was like whispering in her ear like aunt lori you know we already checked him out and right. she was like I, I have questions to ask i'm not done <laughs> <laughs> and some pretty deep questions like what didn't you say one of them was like what's your philosophy yeah. of life <laughs> yes yeah and you know the thing that's so um i love what you said about those posts really do show all different kinds of love one of my favorite movies ever is love actually yeah. that's just a really beautiful movie um but um it, you know it stars like liam neeson and hugh grant and um it, it stars a lot a lot of people um but the reason why i think it's so beautiful is because it focuses on all the different types yes it's not just about a love between a parent and child or a husband and wife there's love between friends love between siblings mm -hmm. um, love between the community um uh, even love for a politician <laughs> but it focuses on all the different types all the different layers all the different kinds of love and i do think that our our family was blessed with this event where love was shown on um, many, many, many different levels and types of relationships. It was beautiful. Oh, well, th thank you for coming on and sharing that with us. I, that's why I was, I was really wanting to make sure we got to do the IG Live today because it was just so exciting and wanting to talk with you about it and just share our excitement yeah. for it because a lot of it, even though we don't know Kayla, I feel like through your books and through talking to you, I, I think a lot of us feel like we do. Yeah. So to get to experience this wedding with you through social media has been really wonderful. So I look forward to seeing more pictures and videos and of the wedding and more more reflections and insights because you always have such um, such a beautiful perspective on everything. Thank you. I appreciate you so, so much. I was glad, I'm so glad I got to talk to you today. Yes. Me too. I was looking forward to it. So thank you for everybody who joined us. This will be, if you joined us late, this will be up on Instagram in a few minutes and later on our YouTube channel. And like we said, please go follow author Dee, Dee Cummings and get to see all of the pictures and videos from the yeah. wedding. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so bye. bye everybody. Thank you.